Okay, um, I'm Andrew Hughes. Um, I'm here to represent the Cantera Initiative, um, and we're going to demonstrate interoperable consent receipts. Um, they're the result of a work group called the Consent and Information Sharing Work Group. Um, so let's get into it. So, the demonstration. Uh, just going to set the stage for you. Um, standardized consent receipts will help enable a product ecosystem for data subjects to start exercising their data rights. So imagine what that would take us. And we're seeing products uh, start in the marketplace um, that are providing uh, ways for data right, um, uh, exercising data rights. Why is this? Well, people are people, not computers or databases. If you imagine, in a few years, uh, what happens if you consented to 500 services? Imagine uh, consent is based off a process and takes off, and now you're being barraged by the denial of service of uh, consenting everywhere, clicking everywhere. What are you supposed to do? What if you need to exercise, what if you'd like to exercise your uh, subject access request widely? Where did you consent? Where's your data? Well, hard to track. So now, what will we do? Uh, one solution, and we've seen a few variations of this so far today. Uh, the solution is to have your own privacy dashboard, um, which allows you to manage your data rights and act when you choose. So what's it going to take to have a privacy dashboard? If we're going to have an open ecosystem. So um, one of the, um, one of the, um, uh, challenges that uh, regulations like GDPR address is the problem of lock-in. So if your data is with one provider, because it's proprietary, because you can't port, uh, port it with you, of course, you're locked into that provider. Well, if we have proprietary consent platforms that are proprietary dashboards, you're kind of locked into them as well. So what about data portability for the consent platforms? So an open ecosystem, actually requires standard data formats. Uh, we saw the JLink protocol um, allowing interconnection between services that use JLink. The idea behind consent receipt is that it's an open standard, open specification, um, that is a standard way of describing um, those consent interactions. Awesome. Okay, so that's the data structure. Um, this is an image of the actual specification, we're at version 1.1. 1 .1. Um, the work group took three-ish years uh, to, to come to this point of agreement. Uh, working in a work group, trying to reach consensus, uh, takes a lot of time and effort. Uh, finally approved this in um, February of 2018, and now we're looking for implementation. Uh, this is one representation of the consent receipt. We'll see some of the live demos uh, in the demo. Okay. So on to the demonstration. I have no idea what time it is. Okay. So in the work group, we have members of Cantera. Uh, the logos that you see on screen are the five organizations that within the space of about seven weeks, um, put some developer time in, arrange for some sprints, and actually create a code to externalize consent receipts from their internal representation and make them available to other companies, uh, other organizations uh, in the work group. Who would be able to import, present the data back to the viewer, um, and then in a future stage, allow exercise of data rights. The, important, the, the very important aspect that we're talking about in this uh, demonstration is the companies are different companies. It's not one company uh, allowing creation of consent receipts and then also showing the, um, the consent receipt at the end. So just to recap, we have our friendly data subjects um, wanting to check out some books, buy some books at the bookstore. They 
click OK to consent to whatever um, the, the, the purpose is uh, at the bookstore to get a consent receipt. They store it wherever they want to. So personal data vault, you'll see in the demonstration, it's my downloads folder, um, or with an API to, uh, to a platform. And of course, with the a different product, um, we'll take a look at what's actually in the consent receipt. Okay, instructions to self, switch. Okay, I'm gonna sit down here and bring this closer. Just gonna open a few windows here. The demo's going to work perfectly, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, in this scenario, I'm the uh, data subject, uh, otherwise known as the shopper. Um, Uscure has a, a bookshop, and they're selling books cheap today. I'll put a few of my cards, do <coughs> shopping things. And then, when I go to check out, <laughs> okay, so this is a very simplified uh, privacy notice. Um, the privacy statement is behind here, gives you some information. Um, the, the user front end was not part of the demo process. Um, these, these interfaces will be whatever application, whatever service the data controller is offering to you. Oh, yeah. I'd like to be contacted for marketing purposes. Mm -hmm. And I, I actually consent. I watch carefully. It's being generated. It's my downloads directory. And I can see the books that I've bought. So that's getting the consent receipt. Now, this is a receipt viewer by Open, um, open Consent. And let's just take a look. So pick up the receipt, drop it into the viewer, decode it. And this is the raw data structure in JSON. And this is the view of the consent receipt data in a more readable format. Why is this significant? Well, I'm assuming you can't actually read the text on there. It's significant because UbiSecure uses specification to create the data into a standard format, and Open Consent uses the same specification to read and parse the data. So that's the interoperability thing that we're showing here. It's the simplest form, write it, and then someone else reads it. Uh, you may be able to see that there is time and date details in the transaction, um, information about the controller and how to contact them, where the privacy policy was, and what is the service and purposes presented to the data subject. Uh, as John noted, this is a point in time representation of the interaction. For those of you with sharp eyes, you might have noticed that the field names were PII controller, PII principal, which are ISO standard terms for what the GDPR refers to as the data subject and data control. What Open Consent is showing here is the ability to reskin the field names to whatever is whatever's required in your jurisdiction right, according to your laws because user experience is, is critical here. Um, we'll have one of, the, um, uh, one of the companies come up, uh, Richard from Consentua, talk about user experience in just a bit. It's exactly the same data, but the specification allows you to um, go to the global representation and bring it back down to your, your jurisdiction. 
Okay. Uh, there's a question on the screen. How does encapsulate for purpose of use? It's in here. Um, we're building standard uh, dictionaries of uh, common purposes for collection of data according to industry. It's future work. Um, this is the Consensua uh, Play application. So we'll see it again. So I'll say OK, subscribe, and magically I will save my consent receipt down at the bottom. Down into my wonderful uh, personal data repository, otherwise known as my downloads directory. Up in there, decode it. Consent receipt data. Does anyone find this exciting? <laughs> yeah. I've been told never insult your audience, so I won't say what it was. <laughs> okay. Um, just to get a, a closer view of what's in the uh, uh, what's in the consent receipt, uh, this might be a little, little easier to see. So we have version information, so the actual time and date. Um, signatures, um, other technical information about the actual interaction, um, information about the controller, contact information about the controller, the service that was being used, the purposes, plural, and then other details around special, uh, special traction for information, categories of information. That's the demo. Did I mention that from Go to last week was about seven weeks. And future work. So I'm going to ask uh, you three to come up. Um, so the future for Consent Receipt at Cantera Initiative <laughs> is we would like anyone and everyone to externalize the consent records that they already have in their system in the standardized format of the consent receipt specification. Because we're building a set of, we're building a list of implementations that will be able to consume these things, presumably for privacy dashboards and other purposes, other reasons, that you will invent. We have no idea what people are going to do with the standardized data format. And that's the good thing about open standards. Um, just to take a peek at some of the future use, uh, future development, this is some screenshots of the uh, mobile app from Digimi. Um, you can see that um, basically this is uh, some new development on layered privacy notices. So user, user experience is a high focus for that. Uh, Richard, do you want to say a few words about um, the design of the dashboard here? So one of the really exciting things Save about I, I'm Richard Going I'm from Consentua slash the University of Southampton. Um, so by background, I'm a human computer interaction designer, hence my interest in this. Um, so I think one of the exciting things about having consent receipts at scale uh, is that they start to put people's preferences and consent into the technology stack, and you have a record of what you've consented to. Uh, and, and crucially, you have that record, not just the company uh, who's relying on that consent. And that means we can start doing things uh, like consent dashboards. This idea that we can start to interrogate and understand and ask questions of the consent that we've given to sort of empower people. And this goes right back to sort of um, one of Ben Schneiderman's golden rules of HCI design, which is that people should be able to interrogate the state of the system. And we can't do that with consent as it stands, but actually with consent receipts and with the right UI on top of that, we can start doing that. And I think the key thing is we don't understand yet the questions people are going to want to put to their consent. We don't know what their wants and their needs are around that, and some of them don't even exist yet. Uh, but we can take a user-centered approach to working that out. Um, so in terms of just sort of conceptual mock-ups, that's what we've been working on, uh, we're saying, well, maybe people are going to want to understand, you know, who has access to my location data? Who has access to my health data? Maybe I've recently found out some health information and I want to go and review who actually has access to that. Or maybe I want to take a more of a kind of use case approach. I want to say, um, 
Who might be trying to contact me by email? Who have I given consent to me by email? Who have I consented to delivering targeted adverts to me, taking that more purpose view? And then sort of on the other side, saying, well, for a particular relationship I have with one of these companies who might want to email me, how's that changed over time? Uh, so maybe initially when I signed up with the system, I gave them these consents at the bottom. I said, you can use my browsing history, my location, my email address, and you can target me with adverts, you can email me. Um, but maybe later on I've, I've said, no, actually, your newsletter is not very interesting to me. I've taken that consent away, and I can see what my current state is, um, and maybe I can do things to it. I can go and read the privacy policy if I'm so minded. I can maybe withdraw my consent, or maybe I could uh, pose other questions to it. Um, but like I said, it's something that's still kind of open. We don't really understand what these dashboards are going to be used for precisely. Thank you, Richard. Uh, Stuart. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Stuart Lacey, founder and CEO of Trinomi. Um, we've been at the kind of production end of this for about six years now. Um, and just to be clear, we run a distributed and decentralized but federated control. What that means is we use smart contracts to be able to track all this where we don't touch, see, or cannot see any of the customer data, but we run only the rights framework on behalf of both our business our customers as well as individuals. And what that uh, uh, surfaces as an experience is the ability to generate full enterprise um, interactions hosted or um, a direct install. And what that means is to be able to, as a business person, run campaigns in any variant that you might need in order to generate any of the outcomes you want with any of your customers and then run that all the way through to importing and exporting and linking to any other consent frameworks and formats, generating and running um, those campaigns against any list of your customer base, interacting with your um, e-marketing systems, with your um, uh, CRMs, whatever. It's not a GDPR platform per se. Rather, what we look at is it's just uh, customer data rights management. So that's e-privacy, it's e-marketing, it's GDPR, it's opt-in, it's data sharing across jurisdiction, any and all of the above. And effectively, what the smart contract allows you to do, and this is one thing we've been really excited working with uh, Kentaro on, is Whilst we love the fact it's a receipt, we've always been a proponent of the fact it's actually a living instrument. And these rights endure, and the contract uh, as a fully immutable and fully auditable instrument actually allows full um, historical utility of that permissions through the life cycle of not just the company, but of the customer as well. And we can present that obviously in terms of dashboards. I think there's some great work being done there. Um, it can also be obviously um, issued in terms of a, an actual certificate, as you've seen instances in the live demo. I think the one thing that's really interesting in the future for the space is on the interoperability level. And so, um, whilst I think the JLink protocol is really interesting, I'm really excited to find out more about it, the way that we've always viewed that is it is about user experience, it's about ease and grace and not having fatigue. And so there's some very interesting uh, intellectual property we filed and a bunch of patents we have around how we can make context and location and other very rich data sets about yourself to your experience so that effectively an AI but enabled against you, permissioned, can actually manage the 80 or 90% of the heavy lifting of your consent so only the exception treatments are directed to you. And that I think is kind of where we see the really interesting part going is being able to have fully customizable, real-time, on-demand and available personalization of any goods or services you want without pop-ups getting in the way because your consent management AI is managing that but it is fully informed and it acts based on your instructions, just contextually aware. So I think that's where the interesting stuff has come from. Thank you, sir. Okay, so Oscar is going to give us uh, a few words on how wonderfully easy it was <laughs> to read the specification and develop and instruct the developers on how to do it. Thank you very much, Andrew. Great demo, by the way. Yes. I started uh, in January, I joined this uh, Kantara group myself, started getting acquainted about what is consent received, kind of get it at some point, and as you saw in one of the slides already in February they were releasing the specification, and soon after that we had the challenge to come here in Helsinki in August and present a real demo. So we focused using our customer identity and access management to you secure, use um, Consent Receipt Generator that was done by Cantara for an earlier version of this Consent Receipt. We integrated this, but as he mentions, only seven weeks to do this, we were focused on showing the user perspective. 
how you can give your consent, click the buttons, and see finally something that you can keep it, this downloaded file. So it's been a very interesting project for us, and this is just the beginning. Thanks, Oscar. Um, so, let me just go back to where we were. Okay, so next steps. Um, from the Cantor Initiative workgroup point of view, uh, we're going to update based on learnings from the demo and feedback from, uh, from other people. Um, transform it into a privacy receipt as, as opposed to specifically a consent receipt. Um, for the demonstration, uh, this is a road tour. We're going to go to all the conferences and show how wonderful this is. We're going to encourage inclusion of consent receipts or privacy receipts in codes of practice. Um, if we can get this concept embedded in codes of practice, we will get wider adoption and hopefully with that interoperable data platform, we'll get more better user experience and better ability to exercise rights. So, join us, please join us. Um, we've got uh, a good uh, couple dozen active participants in the work group, um, working on different aspects and making lots of good progress. Uh, if you want to take a picture, this is contact information um, with links. And the slides will be available afterwards as well. And that's it. On to general questions.